Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are webcasting from the U.S. Department of the Interior here in Washington, D.C. My name is Tanya Joshua, Deputy Policy Director here in the Office of Insular Affairs at Interior. Uh, immediately here with me are uh, my colleagues, uh, Christina Alfano and Tim Popham, and also Kimo Kaloy, who are um, helping make sure we run this smoothly. Last time we had some issues with uh, hearing, so hopefully uh, we will not have that problem this time. Uh, we at the U.S. Department of the Interior have partnered very closely with the U.S. Census Bureau and are pleased to host a webinar series on the upcoming decennial census to be conducted on April 1, 2020. The Interior partners in this effort are the Office of Insular Affairs and the Office of Native Hawaiian Relations. The information we will be sharing is for all individuals who will be counted during the census. However, this series does have a specific focus on Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander communities across the United States and also in the United States territories. Today we are hosting the second Today we are hosting the second webinar in this series with the discussion today on communications outreach to Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander communities regarding the upcoming census. In the coming weeks, there will be five more webinars on the following topic, privacy, race and citizenship, the U.S. territories, the military, and finally, census data products. Before we begin, I am pleased to share greetings from the Director of the Office of Insular Affairs, Mr. Nicolau Pula. Also, Doug Dominich, Assistant Secretary, Insular and International Affairs, had the following remarks that he wanted me to share with all of you, and I quote, I extend my wishes to all for a successful and informative series of webinars and trust that they will be useful. It is vitally important for all communities to be counted wherever you reside in the United States, including in the U.S. territories. The census will inform our work in the federal government and impact the federal resources available to various communities. Please help spread the word, inform your friends and neighbors, and be counted in the upcoming census." End quote. I now have the pleasure to turn the floor over to Kimo Kaloi, Director of the Office of Native Hawaiian Relations, for a few words and introduction of this presenter. Aloha Kako. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us today for this webinar. Um, I just want to introduce uh, John Aieto. Uh, John's the uh, president of the Kalaimoku Group, uh, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander communications firm. Um, that is working with the U.S. Uh, Census Department. Uh, prior to founding the Kalaimoku Group, uh, John ran Hikino, uh, a consulting firm, uh, government, community, and media affairs. Excuse me. For 25 years, John served uh, as had a successful career in Honolulu mm -hmm. Broadcasting as the director of sales for Cox Radio Hawaii and then general manager of VRE Hawaii. Uh, locally I'm, 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 I'm busy right now. I'm going back later. A quick reminder to everyone, please have your phones muted, on mute. And overseeing 17 radio stations throughout the state of Hawaii. John is currently the president of uh, board of directors for the Native Hawaiian Hospitality Association and a board member of the Hawaii Bowl, the Pacific Links Foundation, and the Ohio Foundation. John is also the leading expert for the U.S. Census on messaging and outreach for the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander community in all 50 states. Uh, Again, thank you, everyone. John, thank you for uh, joining us today. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you, Kimo. Good to hear your voice. Uh -huh. um, we're going to do a quick overview of the Census Communication Plan for 2020. Um, and this is the opening slide, so we can go to the next slide. Uh, the 2020 integrated, thank you very much. On a macro level, this slide shows all the different compartments that Team YNR, along with the Kalaimoku Group, approached the messaging platform for the 2020 census. It is a very broad in scope plan that includes the traditional media and advertising as well as digital and website assets, social media, um, but it goes f much further into stakeholder relations, um, working hand-in-hand -hand with the field recruitment officers, 
uh, data dissemination, uh, integrating the statistics in school program, working with the public relations and events team, handling the crisis communications, and of course, the giant partnership program. The last piece of this slide is the campaign optimization, which is very fascinating for the first time because the data will be coming in in real time with the digital platform. We will actually be able to see which markets and census tracks are doing well and which markets and census tracks are not doing well. We will be able to analyze uh, and perhaps move around assets and or apply more pressure into the census tracts that are uh, trailing uh, in um, response. Next. This is the team YNR, uh, the overall arching um, name for our group. We're made up of multiple advertising agencies and PR firms. Um, what they did was they had multicultural experts from each ethnic group, as well as Young and Rubicon, who is a considered a top five uh, agency, um, traditional agency. So Carol H. Williams was the African American expert. TDW and company was the Asian American expert. Um, Kalai Moku was a Native Hawaiian. Pacific Island expert, GNG was the Native American and a Native Alaskan expert. Culture One World was the Hispanic um, cultural experts. And then we had um, expertise by other organizations based on their particular medium. So Rheingold uh, represented um, the digital medias, Wavemaker represented the traditional media's guide house was the um, overarching PR firm. So this was our team. Next. Just a quick um, jump in, John, to let anybody know if you can't hear or you have any issues, please send a chat to Christina Alfano. She's monitoring the chat line. Thank you. This is an overview of the calendar of where we are today. Uh, you can see we're in January of 2020. Um, the census timeline actually started in fourth quarter of last year, um, which is a little bit confusing because it's actually the first quarter of the federal fiscal. Um, but remote Alaska began on December 16th messaging. Secretary Dillingham went actually out to Alaska about a week ago and started the first enumeration. January, February, and the first week in March is what we like to call awareness phase, followed by motivation phase, followed by reminder phase, and then in September of this year is the thank you phase. These are the phases for the advertising campaign. Each advertising message was custom made to serve a particular phase. Next. This is an overview of the phases that we just covered and uh, the dates, a little bit more detailed, and sort of the overview of what the message was for each phase. In awareness, it was keep the 2020 census top of the mind. In motivation phase two, it was to drive participation and action and encourage the 2020 census survey to be complete. In reminder phase, it was to inform people that enumerators would be coming to their home. It was still time to participate in the survey, but to be also on the lookout for enumerators in your neighborhood. And then the fourth phase, the thank you phase, is really when we complete the census, we thank the public for participating and let them know what, that the data will be forthcoming. Next. Before you go on, John, a quick reminder, please mute your phones for those who have just joined us. Thank you very much. <coughs> this is an overview of the paid media audiences. At the far left is the different groups that I was speaking about. 
A-I-A-N, is a Native American, Native Alaskan, Asian American, Black, African American, Latino, NHPI, of course, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders, and Legacy and Emerging, which is cultures, uh, cultures that um, Brazilian, Russian, Polish, and Middle Eastern. So you can see how we divvied up the audience groups, and then the language guide is on the far right of how we are messaging these groups in their traditional languages. Next. The paid media approach was to focus and prioritize the hard to count audiences. And we did a zero based planning where every agency took a bottoms up approach to developing their audience strategies. This was not an exercise where the census came to us and said, John, here's the amount of resources you got, X amount of dollars, build a plan. They basically went to each multicultural agency and said, what do you need to reach your audience at a high level so that they can participate in the census? Next. Um, this is a concept where, called recency theory, which is what the media plan is based on. And what it basically means is that when you run an ad, people will remember the ad for a long period of time. And so there's two strategies laid out on this track. We did the strategy on the right where we wanted to go ahead and peak during the motivation phase and then tail off. So the overall campaign is extremely hot and heavy for the three phases and then it phases off. Next. This is an overview of how the media process worked. We had a media day in April of 2019 um, where we invited media companies to participate by either coming in and or joining on WebEx, learning about the media process, and then giving them the opportunity to apply via the RFP portal. So it was a very open process that any media company in, this, in the United States could put forth a proposal um, as well as in Puerto Rico. Next. This is the media by overview list. A total of 3,889 vendors uh, were purchased for the 2020 census media campaign. And you can see um, it broken down by groups uh, and the number of vendors. If we go to Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander, um, over 45 vendors are being used to reach our community. Next. This is the paid media summary of the whole campaign. As you can see on the top bottom right, it's $240 million. That is the entire campaign and how it breaks up by media, national TV, local TV, national radio, local radio, out of home, and so forth. Next. This is a slide that shows the media coverage where every area in dark green is being reached with a local media buy. So you can see it covers the state, the states very well, it covers Hawaii very well, all the key metropolitan areas. A total of 149 out of the 210 DMAs in the United States will be reached. Next. The considerations we gave on the media budget was digital media would have a more significant role in this campaign because of the 
digital component of being able to participate and fill out the actual census. Um, this will highly impact the total spend on the per channel in contrast to 2010, because in 2010, there was not a digital media advertising component. There are a little fewer traditional media outlets compared to 2010 as well. Um, we saw a lot of print and newspapers um, either contract or go out of business or merge. So there are actually a little less traditional media vendors that were buying in 2020 that we did in 2010. And then a little overview of the 2020 landscape. Um, we were very concerned about the presidential elections and the Olympics creating advertising opportunities and pricing challenges for us. Next. This is a 2020 paid media by investment by media type. So this is a breakdown as to where the, the total dollars are spent um, 2010 versus 2020. So you can see that on an overall in 2010, 167 million was spent on traditional advertising. And in 2020, 240 million is being spent on traditional advertising. Next. This is more information comparing 2010 to 2020, this time broken down by ethnic groups. And you can see our group, NHPI, in 2010 had 1.1 million, or 7% of the total budget. And in 2020, we have 1.8 million, representing about 8% of the budget. I will tell you that um, we're very fortunate in that our population, when you compare it, our population is about 0.4% of the population of the United States. So we were overrepresented dollar-wise. Next. This is an overview of the reach and frequency. It's a very technical formula, but it basically says that we're reaching 99% of all the households in 2020, whereas in 2010, they reached 63.5% of the households. Next. <clears throat> this is some of the highlights, highlights from the diverse mass. And diverse mass is everyone in the United States we spoke a little bit about the ethnic um, multicultural experts. Diverse mass is everyone else. So it is, I guess you could say, the mainstream um, and the, the traditional American population base. But as you can see, national TV will cover 46 vendors, in, including an estimated of over 16,000 campaign spots. National radio will deliver over 3.3 billion impressions. Local radio and TV will represent 71 out of 210 markets. And it goes on and on and on. It's a very large, robust, comprehensive plan. Next. This is some of the upfront highlights, which is some of the programs that the national television will be buying. <clears throat> for you to go over uh, everything from WWE wrestling to 60 minutes to the good doctor. Next. This is the native Hawaiian Pacific Islander audience plan highlights. Here we get into um, the strategy of how we were able to reach the NHPI community the latest census showed that about 45% of the NHPI community lives in the state of Hawaii and 55% live spread throughout the other 49 continents. So we focused on Hawaii with about 50% of the budget. 
using traditional advertising, television that included cultural programming like the Merry Monarch, the Nahuku Hanohano Awards, as well as news uh, and local programming. And then on the radio, uh, in state, we focused on any Hawaiian music radio stations, and there are uh, many, many of them, about 16 of them uh, in the state of Hawaii. So each one is getting um, a piece of the budget and advertising to our community. On the continent, we ended up using more print and digital. So one of the things that we did in um, the continent was sort of take a more targeted approach to how to reach our individuals. We have a direct mail um, drop that's happening twice, one in awareness phase and one in motivation phase. And we use a company called Info Groups cons Consumer Data Compilation Tool that was able to um, specifically target Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders addresses in the continent. We also got support from some key um, community partners like the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander Complete Count Committee, the Kamehameha Schools and the Office of Hawaiian Affairs as well as EPIC all participated in helping getting us um, their members to receive the direct mail listings. We also used local magazine on the continent. One of the biggest magazines that we're using is the Hawaiian Airlines In Flight to reach all of our NHPI cousins on the continent. Uh, so we will be in all of the Hanaho magazines, as well as local magazines like Kamaaina Magazine, which is out of Las Vegas. Um, so there are certain NHPI magazines on the West Coast that super serves their community. We will be participating in ads and editorial um, pieces in those magazines. And the last piece of the NHPI campaign on the continent is a very robust digital campaign on social media that included a music video, which we'll get onto a little later. Next. Campaign development. This talks a little bit about our approach that was based on research. We first did what's called CBAMs, which was really focusing on the different audiences and different areas where the United States population lives and what their lifestyles are. Are they young, with young families? Are they retirees? Do they live in the country? Do they live in the city? Are they high income, low income, and so forth? So we broke it down into, I believe it was 16 different uh, platforms, and that helped us guide the research and the creativeness. Then we created the platform with the entire group and came out with several different platform ideas. And we went to the community and we ran focus groups all throughout the United States, testing which platform would be the best. And the platform that came out on top was Shape Your Future, Start Here, Participate in the Census 2020. So we took then took the platform and started to come up with creative concepts to reach our audience. And we went and tested the creative concepts and ideas once again through focus groups, internet testing, and call-out research. And it allowed us to have a very specific target of what we wanted to go ahead and reach to be effective in this advertising campaign and for creative to be as effective as can be. Next. This is an overview of all the testing that I spoke about, where it took place, 122 focus groups for the campaign testing, CBAMS was 42 focus groups, and QIPT was 18 focus groups, all throughout the country, uh, including Hawaii. Next. Before you go, John, just wanted to point out that we, again, we're having a special webinar specifically focused on the territories 
the other territories outside of Puerto Rico. <laughs> So let's talk about the campaign next. This is a slide, <clears throat> excuse me, that shows the different phases for the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander campaign. You can see on the far left, the early education um, took place all throughout 2019 and ended on January 13th. It had paid advertising, it had PSAs. We did a lovely PSA with Marcus Mariota, um, Mapuana De Silva, and Dr. John Osorio. We had events that started from September. We did events all throughout the country, uh, Seattle, as well as San Diego, um, the large Hawaiian Civic Club Convention in Maui, and the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement Convention in Honolulu. We did earned media, we created electronic press kits, and wrote articles for the NHPI publications, and then we created materials for our partners. We had a robust partnership approach. Over 3,000 partners have signed on to help get the message out for the 2020 census. And so we developed materials for the partners to go ahead and use. Um, including um, FAQs, posters for the young uh, children targeted, and also promotional materials for the Census in Schools program. And then we did some email marketing welcoming the community. So you see, it's not just one piece that is driving the campaign. It's all of these pieces moving together and working together as we slide to the next phase in awareness, it is the same sort of formula, um, but it is um, more complex. So this is an ad of our family first 30-second uh, commercial. It should play if you push the button one more time. There you go. It's a little jumpy because of the digital platform that we're on, but this is a 30 second ad that features Nainoa Thompson as one of our trusted voices, as well as Kevin Mokule, who is a captain in the Honolulu Fire Department. It has families that are Micronesian, Tongan, Samoan, and Hawaiian. So that's our family first 30 second ad next. This is an overview of a script of a radio ad. If you push the button, it should play the radio ad. Well, so anyway, this is the radio ad in the script form. Uh, because of the technology that we're using, we're not able to play it but let's go to the next slide next. This is uh, the direct mail piece. This is the first direct mail piece. And one of the things that was very important that came out in the research, in the focus groups, when we spoke to Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders on the continent, they consistently told us that every time there's advertising for them, it was based in Hawaii and that they could not relate to people in Hawaii anymore because the continent was their new home. So we really made a, a strong effort to capture the Native Hawaiian Pacific Island communities with them in their background. So this is a, a Tongan family in the state of Utah. You can see how they're dressed. It's a cold weather up in the Timberlines and it reflects the community that lives in Colorado Salt Lake City, Provo, and so forth. And we wanted to show them in their community. Next. Uh, these are a few slides from the motivation commercials, a few commercials from the mo motivation phases. Let's see if we can get this to work. Go ahead and push it again. It's the 9 or 30 second ad. So the audio isn't participating with us, but 
We were very fortunate to get Nainoa Thompson to participate in the census. Those were some of the uh, trusted voices. Uh, Dr. Tusi um, Ofanga Vailia from the University of Hawaii. Uh, he's a Samoan professor, as well as a Fijian professor from the University of BYU Laie. This is the script of a 60 second um, radio ad. We actually did a radio ad that's half in native Hawaiian, half in English. So this is what this ad is. Next. John, just to let everybody know what I can do is send uh, the power, share the PowerPoint after, and then everybody can play the videos later. That'd be great. Next. This is um, one of our newspaper ads. Um, there's two pillars of the campaign. One is called Trusted Voices. The other is called Family First. This is a Family First ad. Uh, this is a Hawaiian family um, in motivation ad. Thank you the census is for our family. The copy is on the right. Next. These are a few ads from the reminder phase. Next. This is a trusted voice of the Samoan chief. This is Dr. Tusi Ofanga Vailio. And he speaks to his community as well as our community um, in having them wanting to encourage them to participate in the 2020 census. And you can see at the very bottom, the tag keeps changing um, whether what phase that we're in. This is a reminder phase. It says, it's not too late. Shape your future. Start here at 2020census.gov, paid for by the U.S. Census. Next. And that's the slide. That's our presentation for today. If you go on the um, census, 2020 campaign uh, website. You can see many of these ads as well. And if you go on the census.gov website, you can see all of the digital ads on the YouTube channel, the broadcast ads, as well as the music video that we created that's available on the census Facebook page, as well as the census YouTube page. And the music video we're very proud of. We've gotten a lot of response. Over a million people have watched it, and it's been out for about 14 days now. Are there any questions that I can ask the audience? They can go ahead and write it in the chat line, uh, or they can try and speak over the uh, phone line. John, this is Tanya. Thank you very much. Um, if you don't mind, I'll lead off. Uh, I do have a question for you. Um, what if there is, so you have the campaign, you've done a lot of research and uh, have a, a plan ready. Uh, is, what if there is um, anybody who feels they need additional help with communications and outreach in their specific area or they want to boost it a little? Do they reach out to you? Do they reach out to Kaveh at Census? How do they do that? Yeah, they can definitely reach out to us at info at kalaimoku.com anytime, uh, depending on who they are, if they're a partner or an organization, uh, Kehaulani Butts and I and Kave uh, all communicate to get uh, our partners and organizations materials that they can use to spread the word in their community. Uh, John, we have a question from online. Can communities use your scripts to create their own PSAs? Yes, they can. Um, as long as they are a partner, they can access the scripts on the partnership hub. If they're not a partner, they can reach out to us um, directly at info at and we can work with them in getting the scripts. 
and they can create their own PSAs. We actually got a call from uh, several personalities that had heard the ads asking if they could create their own PSA. And we said, yes, uh, we would love that to not only to communicate to the census community, but to really communicate to their own community. As you know, in this world of social media, there are a lot of individuals that literally have their own media channels. Jason Momoa has 12 million people following him on Instagram. So when Jason says something, uh, he can easily put it out through his social media networks, which is almost like a 1980 television show, the amount of audience that these influencers are able to reach. So we're happy to um, help you with those scripts. Once again, the best email is info at kalaimoku.com. Hey, John, this is Kimo. I have a, another question that's come up. Um, how many times should we expect a native Hawaiian Pacific Islander in Hawaii and then also outside of Hawaii? Uh, how many times should we expect them to see a native Hawaiian Pacific Islander ad? I guess, I guess they mean hear or see. So the broadcast campaign only runs in the state of Hawaii, um, okay. and it's very high frequency. I don't watch a lot of television myself, and I've probably seen it eight times already. The campaign just started on the 14th, so it's very high um, frequency numbers. And what we basically went ahead and bought uh, in this order was Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander cultural programming, news, and local programming. So if you watch Mary Monarch, if you watch um, Hoku's or the Kamehameha School Song Contest, whether it be in Hawaii or on the web in California or Colorado, you will see the ads targeting the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander community. As far as the other 49 states, because we could not justify the efficiency of buying a television ad in Salt Lake City or San Diego, um, we did not buy broadcasts. There will be a lot of census ads in those communities, however, by the other multicultural groups or the overarching campaign, which is called Diverse Mass. The Diverse Mass campaign actually starts in the middle of February. So you will see a lot of census ads. Uh, I was watching the CBS Evening News yesterday and it had the census ad uh, already on, and that's the PSA talking about confidentiality. So we should be able to see them through television, through radio, um, in Hawaii, and through diverse mass on the 49 states. Any Hi, other John, questions? Good afternoon. This is Dial Keiju calling. Um, my question is, uh, I really appreciate, the, first of all, your map that showed all those points what the focus group for yes. nationwide. So is there a national list, or do you have a list of uh, contact person per state? For the NHPI community? Yes, sir. Um, I'll have to check with the Census Partnership Office. I believe they do. They have partnership specialists in every major market that covers all 50 states. The NHPI community, <clears throat> because we're the minority of the minorities, we do not have dedicated NHPI staffers in, let's say, Missouri or Alaska or Alabama. While there is dedicated staff for the census in those markets. They're not dedicated for NHPI. The NHPI dedicated staff is only in the state of Hawaii um, because of the 45% of the population being in Hawaii. I hope that uh, answers your is, question, sorry. Yeah, I just wanted, this is Tanya, uh, John, I just wanted to add to your point. Um, uh, you, a couple days ago, we had the partnership office uh, led by Anna, Anna and Kave giving a presentation. Their presentation will be on our website. Uh, it should be on later today. 
and there's a contact for the partnership office that you can reach out to them. And uh, also, if you need to, you know, if chemo or if, if we're the ones that you know and you want to reach out to us, we can try to connect you. Uh, that's the whole point we're trying to connect. Uh, and like you said, we're, we, we, we don't expect to have dedicated NHPI folks everywhere, but we do have NHPI all over the United States, so we want to make sure that we, we reach them. So I'll make sure that that is posted on our website uh, page. Everything links back to census.gov, and uh, we'll try to help make sure that information is funneled uh, back, back to people. Hi, awesome. Tanya. This is this, this is Kave. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, Kave. Okay. Okay. I was I was just gonna say just to kind of piggyback on your guys' comments. Um, we do have NHPI partnership specialists in the LA region. We do have them in the Denver region. Um, I'm still uh, finding out. We do have partnership specialists like all across the country. Like John said, not all of them are NHPI specific, but we do have some NHPI specific in other regions that there are a lot of NHPIs. So if you want to get in contact with them, please just email me and then I can connect you to their um, region where they are. Thanks. Thank you, Kabe. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? All right, if there are no more questions from our uh, online team, we'll go ahead and close the meeting for today. Just a reminder that we have a, um, a webinar coming up on privacy, and that will be um, on February 6th, Thursday. So we still have some time. Um, it's with Michael Hawes. He'll be talking specifically on privacy. So we hope that you'll join us, spread the word as we uh, carry on through this uh, webinar series for uh, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders and the 2020 Census. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Uh -huh.